All right. Uh, Lo, has everyone signed in so far today? Sign in with your membership number, please. All right. Welcome. Uh, Commander Seams isn't available this evening uh, to attend this, so I am Mike Hewitt, the First Vice Commander. I will be filling in in his absence today. Bear with me. I am going to follow a script as best I can, uh, and we will get through this. Uh, the thing I'm most worried about is butchering a few people's names. Uh, if I do, I am sorry. Vice Commander. Yes. This was reported to be a closed meeting for members only of post 435. At the time of the request, that all non members be invited to the meeting. Who do we have that is a non post 435 member in attendance at this time? Okay. Well, the lawyers are going to be a requirement for this. Uh, the people that are doing the, the Zoom are volunteers through the auxiliary. They will not have a vote in this meeting this evening. Yes. I don't believe there was a second to that. Is anyone willing to second the motion to remove any non members from this meeting this evening? I second that motion. Any non essential members? I ask to amend that motion by saying that people that are essential to the meeting, no. such as you, Sean, Diane, yeah. uh, and anybody else that is part of this, be exempt from that motion. Should I, should I take the order? The players won't be here. All right, can I make a motion to amend the motion to allow any non-435 post members who are acting in a capacity of a volunteer to assist and facilitate this evening's meeting to be allowed to stay in attendance? Can I have a second on that? The motion has been seconded. The motion approved. Thank you. We got a vote on all those in favor of allowing the volunteers to stay in the room and help facilitate, please show by raising your hands. The ayes have it. The motion carries. There wasn't a second to the original. So uh, he amended it to say essential. Point of order. Point of order. Uh, I don't know why. Uh, uh, amended uh, motion. Amendment to the motion. You need to call for a vote to the amendment to the motion. Oh, all right. Can I call for a vote to for an amendment to the amendment of the motion? Jim Munson second. The ayes have it. Again, please bear with me. Can I have a vote on the original motion to remove any non-435 members from the meeting as amended? The ayes have it. All right. Again, Commander Adams, uh, Commander Siemens isn't able to be here tonight. Uh, again, my name is Mike Hewitt, and I will try to lead or facilitate this meeting this evening. Along with us this evening are Dennis Polowski, <clears throat> and I'm going to group the name up, Glenn McCloskey, our post counsel and co counsel. I'm going to ask the executive board members to stand as well if they are in attendance this evening. Lynn Leach. All 
right? Dave King, Andy Keller, Mark Arthel, Gary Anderson, Here. Don Rhodes, Greg Grant, uh, here's Greg is recuperating from knee surgery, and Lynn Lyons. No lead lines? No. Okay. Also this evening we have uh, Post Group 35 Director Terry Hansen uh, who's here. here. And Diane, the Comptroller. And again, finally, Commander Stevens, uh, or Stevens is not available this evening. Uh, this is the first option we've had to meet since the February meeting. Uh, I was not on the board at that time. I was president for that meeting. Uh, I was actually really hoping we were going to have a larger turnout for this meeting when we did that one. Uh, but we will move forward. Uh, safety is our priority here this evening. I am going to unmask while I'm up here because it's hard enough to understand people talking much less through the mask. If at any time you want to make a motion or be heard during the open mic portion, you'll need to come up here to this and you can remove your mask as well, please. Uh, I will step away or whoever else is up there will step away and maintain social distancing six feet apart. Uh, follow the guidelines, please. A couple of housekeeping matters. Uh, I'd like to thank the Veterans Club here in Bloomington for letting us use the building this evening at no charge. Uh, if you haven't eaten anything yet, uh, I would really appreciate it if we patronize them a little bit, maybe get a bite to eat. I had a sandwich, it was delicious. Um, so, uh, and uh, special thanks to Commander Lawrence uh, Swanson uh, here who allowed us to use the, the room at no charge. Uh, most information continues to be put out via social media. Uh, Facebook is updated, the post uh, website is updated as things come across. And if you are not using or familiar with the MailChimp uh, email, that's how we're also getting our information out. I will tell you, I'm on some emails, and then the MailChimp, I'm not on. So I need to get on that tonight. If you are not getting mails, emails via the MailChimp that's being used, please talk to myself, Diane, or Sean over here so we can get that rectified uh, because we need to get the information out using the technology that we have available. Uh, we're currently using the National Legion database as a digital database resource for post. We're encouraging all members to go online for the, and use this database to update any of their information. So again, if you're not sure, go to the Legion uh, online and update your information there. That way we can draw from the Legion's the national database to make sure that we have accurate and up-to-date information. Uh, thanks to the, uh, to the agent, Don Rhodes, uh, the post now has more current, a more current database that's being reviewed every week uh, for modifications and accuracy. This will serve as an accurate database for the post dissemination, you know, moving forward. We encourage all members have uh, that have us, or that all members have us, or add us, uh, or open up an email account. If you know someone who's not currently having or doesn't currently have an active email account or how to get a hold of you know, someone or ask questions, please reach out and help them uh, or find someone that can help them. I have received a phone call from uh, an unclub member a few weeks back uh, asking me to look into something to help a post member that didn't have an email account. Uh, more than willing to do that to help someone set up an email if they don't have one. But it's important that we get all of the membership active with an active email account. Uh, 
I want to thank Sean Davis here from the SAL for setting up the Zoom, managing the Zoom, and he's managing it uh, with the assistance of uh, Post Tech in Arizona, Jake, uh, you know, who's also listening in on this, uh, participating in the Zoom meeting. The post is still evolving using Zoom, thanks to you, uh, the President, uh, Angel Davis, uh, that are here helping out this evening. So thank you again. Finally, I'd like to make a motion. Uh, please use the microphone, state your full name. Oh, okay. it, when you want to make a motion, please use the microphone, state your full name uh, when making your motion. Uh, onto the agenda. I'm going to call the membership meeting uh, to order at 19.11. The agenda and permit documents were emailed out via MailChimp on Sunday, the 27th. Agenda item number one, motion to approve the agenda as presented. I'd like to make a motion to approve the agenda as presented via MailChimp. Somebody else there for a weekend help. Did everybody get the MailChimp email to look over the agenda? Did anybody not get it, I should say? There are, you didn't get the email, sir, or there are some that were available here for handouts. We have 135 of them. Okay. Anyone willing to second that motion? I'll second. Yeah. All right. Jim Munson made the motion, sir. Mike Wolverine. Mike Wolverine second the motion. Thank you. All right. At this time, I'd like to ask Jim Munson to please come up forward here.
present to me the winner of this life membership award. Want to go out in the parking lot and take a look? <laughs> I know. I'm going to go over here with a mask. What are you looking for? You don't know the guy. Tom Rackoff, would you please come forward? Sit down, we've got another guy. <laughs> Tom, I, I present that to you for all the work and service you have done. Really? You don't know why all your ranger buddies would please come forward also. Look, I got a ranger buddy. Get yeah, us ranger buddies. Oh, man. <laughs> they stick together for a number of reasons, and guess what? They can stick together now. Damn. Wow. Congratulations, Tom. Yeah. Oh, that's just amazing, man. Thank you, sir. Thank you. We now would like to limit you to a half hour speech. <laughs> okay. This this is really uh, this is really cool. I don't have words to have a speech. <clears throat> But I do appreciate it. I mean, this is pretty amazing. So thank you, all of you members, for this award. It's, it's really cool. Here, here. Show the award. There we go. Thank you. Thank you very much. Vice Commander, Commander, whatever you want to be called. Thank you, sir. Wow. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, we're not refunding your membership check this year. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I gave all the money to Terry. Okay. <clears throat> all right. I'd like to say thank you uh, and congratulations to uh, Tom Eckhoff. When this is over, please, all members, take a moment and you know, give him a fist bump, shake his hand, whatever you feel is appropriate. Thank you. Next, then, uh, item agenda number two membership items for approval. The board is seeking approval from the general membership on matters related to the future sale of the property. To sell the property, the post needs to reactivate the post holding corporation. It also needs to finance or to reform a property and finance committee, okay? There will be a vote on October 28th. That will be a Wednesday here at this location. There will be open seats for both of the entities. As a formality, so that we're conducting the sale process under the authority of the membership, pursuant to our bylaws, there will be another vote on October 28th, asking the members to approve the sale of the property. Tonight, we have two preliminary matters to put before the membership. We will vote on each using a show of hands for approval. The first matter will be to permit the membership to vote on October 28th. So tonight, we'll be asking for a show of hands to allow us to have a vote and decide a property and finance committee and holding corporation at the next meeting. The reason for that is we ordinarily vote for elections during a regular meeting in April of every year. We can't wait till April. For elections taking place at a time other than the annual meeting in April, we need to reschedule or to schedule a special meeting. So tonight I'm asking that all members permit us to use or permit us to schedule elections on October 28th by special meeting notice. That will occur at 7 p.m. at this location. The second matter is we need to search or we need to form a search and nominating committee. We'd like your permission to form that committee tonight. We have a ballot with those candidates 
for the search and nominating committee. Once voted in, their job will be to identify the candidates for the open seats of the Holding Corporation and the Property and Finance Committee. Can I get a motion from the floor to approve a membership vote on October 28th be made by special meeting? Another question, Commander. Yes. Uh, I believe the Property and Finance Committee and the Executive Board Committee were combined back a while back by the vote of this membership. Are you saying that you want to create a property and finance committee or do you want to change the bylaws back to what they were before? Point of order. Yeah. Glenn, do we um, take motion of first and second and then open it up for discussion or do we take the discussion right now? Well, this would perhaps be a clarifying issue, but I would put the motion on the floor first. Okay. Okay. We we need a first and a second, and if it gets there, then we can open it up for full discussion. All right. So I still need the motion. I still move. Mike Holbrook. Mike Holbrook. <coughs> Mark Bartle second. The motion carries. No. 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 The, the, now we go into discussion. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Now we're going into discussion. Thank you. Yes. On the discussion, I'll say again, the property and finance committee was eliminated and combined yes. with the executive board uh, a while back. I can't tell you the date or anything. But we expanded the property and finance, we expanded the executive board to include the property and finance together. And that's correct. That's correct. And the problem was that we've been told it was never formally put to paper and the minutes the minutes were put in the paper, but the actual document was not. But the general membership ruled on it, and they said that the property and finance committee would no longer be. So the question is, do you want to create the property and finance committee separate again against the, the, the vote that the general membership had before? And in all honesty, I want to see the property and finance separate. But I'm asking the question from a uh, point of order. You might want to ask uh, the attorneys to weigh in. Yes, point of order. Oh, you're asking to weigh in. Yes. Well, yes, we're asking for a separate uh, yes. committee and not any other changes to be made. So if, if I understand, Jim, and I'm new to this, so and what, what I have gathered from discussions that I've been in that, yes, if, some point in time in the past, this was it was decided that the holding corporation property finance was going to go away. That, no, 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 sir. It wasn't going to go away. The holding corporation has nothing to do with it. It was the property and finance only. Okay. It's going to combine with the executive board and it's going to be increased by X amount of members. That was approximately about three years ago. I want to say that. Three to four years ago. Yeah. And I and I don't, you know, we, we I agree. It was, it was done. That's not in dispute. But we can't. I don't think any minutes are located to reflect that from when that period was. Is that correct? That we don't have any documentation to support that moving forward. Obviously, it's not in the bylaws. Yeah, I believe we have minutes, but we don't have it in the Bible. Uh, well, we don't have, but we don't have the north. I think that was. Oh, can I, can I speak? I'm Dennis Pulaski. We've spent uh, a considerable search time, I want to say back to July, trying to find uh, and clarify, uh, because I, Mr. Munson, I've heard the same thing, um, but we just don't have any preserved uh, existing record of that so uh, our position was what we do have are the bylaws um, and because of the significance of the sale and how that's laid out in the bylaws both for the post and as well as for the holding corporation uh, we just thought it was best to number one bring everything to the membership number two do it as much strictly by those bylaws as we can just so that that does make it a membership issue. You're right. Uh, 
it probably, I, I, I can tell from the existing operation, at some point the executive committee and the property finance committee were merged into the executive board. But just looking at the bylaws for both the uh, post and the holding corporation, um, we don't have any way to back that up. So we're just saying, let's recognize these bodies and operate that way going forward so far as we're trying to get the post to survive. At some point, I think maybe it has to do with uh, Bob, uh, the willingness of members to commit the time. And I understand that it's a big commitment. And it's probably different when you guys had 2,500 or more members, right? I agree with you in, in the fact that, how far back did you go in the mess? 80? Yeah. Was it? Was it? Yeah, from what I can tell, the bylaws were um, originated in the 50s or 60s, and then amended in the 80s. And then the and then 1998. Yeah, that was the standing rules, I think. No, that was also the bylaws. That's okay. the last one we could find. Okay. The question is, how far did back were the how minutes? How far back did you go with the general membership meeting? I went through whatever I could get my hands on, and I went through. Um, all the boxes and everything too, trying to find some documentation. And I know during the course of last executive board year, um, members that are here that served on that board, you know, we had the same discussion, but we couldn't find the hard copy documentation to support it. If that's being the case, uh, do you have a motion and a second for Corporation property and finance and sale. Do you have that already? Uh, point of order. Um, not to be on the floor tonight. Board passed it. Right. Right so. now we have a motion um, to approve a special meeting on October 28th. And at that special meeting, there will be a secret vote that would include approving the sale of the property and real estate, electing a board of holding corporation members and electing members to the property and finance. The motion on the floor right now, if I'm correct here, is to just approve a special meeting just for that on October 28th. We do have a first by Mike Wolfring and a second by Mark Bardo. Yes. Question on the motion. Are there any other questions or discussion? I shall enhance those in favor. Oh, no, 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 oh, I'm sorry. In my notebook, I have on, on July 24th, 2018, was when we first had the first E board that was the combined finance and executive board. July of 2018. So we, we must have done that change that it's not four or five years ago it's only a couple years ago and we went from seven members of the executive board and five members of the property and finance committee to nine members of of the uh, executive board turning out to be 11 members with the past commander so we went from having seven members to 11 members all together combining and that looks like in the, from these notes from uh, July of 2018. I have a running book here, so I just, that's what I've just discovered, that's all. Uh, for your reference, special meeting, October 28th, yay or nay? Mr. Commander. Yes. In 2018, Tom Hendrickson was post commander at that time. At that point, he made the record, he asked for a motion to separate, uh, to combine the two meetings and to change the bylaw. It was voted upon by, at the annual meeting by the membership to combine the two and revise the bylaws. The bylaws somehow never got revised, but the minutes are there stating that it was to be done. So in order to vote it in a property finance, we would have to reestablish that committee. And that's what we're trying to do. Yes. 
that, that's the gist of where we're going with this. That's that's exactly what we're trying to do. We're trying to reestablish what was changed, and quite frankly, it could get changed back to what was decided in 2018. But for right now, to do this and to do it as transparently to the, everybody in the membership and to go along with the bylaws that should have been changed that weren't, this is what we have to do. The only way we can move forward is if we're following the bylaws. So I understand that the things work. Go ahead, Nora. Uh, <laughs> will a member ever be sent out to all post members uh, about this special committee uh, meeting? Yes. Yes. Approximately uh, October 13th, it'll be uh, released in the mail. Uh, what day? Uh, approximately October 13th, we have a bulk mail service ready to roll, depending what comes out tonight. So, but it'll go to every single um, member. Again, we've worked with the attorneys have worked with uh, membership. They've, uh, Don's got an up-to-date record. We're looking at national, we're cross-referencing because um, again, transparency, we want to make sure everybody gets that letter. Yes. Uh, just for the record, I was there at that meeting and uh, that we voted to and why it didn't get put into the bylaws, I don't know, but it was voted on. And I've been a member of that 11 person ever since. So it is true, it would get Yes, sir. Mark Bartle, task commander. It's not in question, did it happen? Those of us that were there, we know what occurred. Properly, it wasn't done in getting into the bylaws. The minutes are not available that could be located. What this ultimately comes down to is we're trying to get the house in order by requesting these special elections because that's what we have in place. We have in the bylaws that says we have a property and finance committee. In the bylaws, it says we have an executive board. And that's what we're trying to do. So moving forward with the property sale, we're in compliance with what is in writing. That's what this ultimately comes down to. We're not trying to undo, I, I, we have to go this route, correct me if I'm wrong, to satisfy, because we also have to satisfy the state of Minnesota because we are a charitable um, nonprofit. Non -profit. There's more to it than just everyone here being on board or you know agreeing we need to do something in you know, a positive direction. We need to satisfy others outside of this body here that are here tonight and for anyone that's joining us online and who may come to these meetings and vote. That's the reason why we're asking for a vote on the meeting and then on the reformation of the property and finance and to add, add because how many people are we looking for all together on the holding corporation? 10 is it? Six. Six. We've got four. And those, and, but anyway, the bottom line is we need to add more people for inclusion. That's what this has all been about, getting people involved in the process here. And there's a lot of people here, more than normal. I think anyone who's been coming to the meetings for the past couple of years would agree with that. It's all about getting, making sure that people are informed what we're doing, why we're doing it. And I thought I needed to get up and just add that. I hope I added a little clarity to this. So. With that, thank you. All right. Reread it. Let, uh, do you want me to reread it? Take it one, one, one section at a time. We're yeah. going on. Don't confuse the issue. A request from the Zoom. They can't hear when the discussion's out in. So you're going to have to start repeating what people say. Okay. Or they have to come up to the mic. Or they have to come up to the car. Yeah. You want me to go back up there? I can come. Sorry. Just continue. Uh, you're right. Yeah. 
Right here. We're in for this. How many are online? Fifteen. Fifteen, good. Plus one, two, three, four. No, we okay. we have the first, we have the second, we have the discussion. No, we'll call for the yeah. Do you want to reread it? What the board is? Yeah. All right. So at this time, we're going to vote on the motion to approve the membership vote by special meeting on October 28th that was already seconded. So all those in favor of having a special meeting on the 28th, please raise your hand. The ayes have it. Thank you. Opposed? Opposed? All right. All right. Can I get a motion to uh to elect four members to serve on the search and nominating committee of the post in accordance with the bylaws article or section one. Members may cast one vote for each nominee for each of the four seats. The nominees with the most votes shall be elected to the four seats. Ballots shall be cast, counted, and results announced in this membership meeting. The search and nominating committee shall provide the nominations for the open seats on the property and finance committee and the post 435 holding company board of directors to the commander no later than October 7, 2020. Members recognize and approve that this is a special election because the post 435 bylaws provide that this election would normally occur in April of each year. Members recognize and approve variances necessary from bylaws Article 4 and Article 5 to evaluate this special election. And the newly reestablished search and nominating committees may it, if it wishes, meet immediately or schedule its first meeting on another reasonable date. Can I have a motion? All right. And your name, sir? Don Rose. Don Rose. Can I have a second? Mark. 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 Any discussion on this? Okay. All right. The first section of the motion is to elect four members to serve on the search and nominating committee of the post per the bylaws so that members can cast one vote for each of the nominees of the four seats. The nominees with the most votes shall be elected to the Four seats, ballots shall be cast, counted, and results announced during this membership meeting. So what we're getting at here is this evening, we want to select that nominating committee. I'm one of the people that volunteered to be on it. So in order for us to be on that, we need your, you know, Mark as well. Uh, Jim Cooper, I believe, has volunteered to be on it. And I uh, can't think of who the other person is. So, uh, Andy. So there's a handful of people who want to be on this committee. So we can in turn look out and find people who are willing to be on the property and finance and the holding corporation. Between now and the 7th of October, so we can get our ducks in a row in order to get that mailing out to the membership by or about the 13th. So on the 28th, the membership can say, yes, these people are going to be you know, who we can elect to be on the holding court or the property and finance committee. Does that 
make it a little bit less legal. Okay. Yes, Tom. The question only is that in the past, the commander simply appointed volunteers to serve on the search and nominating committee each year in the spring before the April election. And that's in the bylaws. That's how it happened. So now coming to this body to elect people for those positions, we have volunteers. It just seems a little excessive. In the past, the commander accepted, I'm sorry, the commander alone accepted the volunteers. And he said, yeah, you can do it. You want to do it? You want to do it? That's how it's been done in the past. So this is the first time it's ever come up as a vote of any kind, to my knowledge. I don't know if others can remember that. Well, it's just a point. That's a point of a, the point of doing it this way is that you're right. That has apparently been the custom. It's never been done. need a microphone. That has been the custom, I understand. But the bylaws say they're supposed to be elected uh, by you folks, and because we want this thing to be as transparent and as flawless as possible, we're coming to you and asking you to formalize that. That's what we're doing. <clears throat> And we do have, as you can see, part of this motion is, uh, you have the piece of paper, uh, C and D, which are making sure you know that there's a slight variation from what's been done. And in this case, uh, it's a special case. Okay. Yes. Dennis Kowalski, uh, lawyer. If anyone wants to check on that, Tom, thanks for bringing that up. Um, the bylaws have an article for the post, Article 4, which is on the Search and Nominating Committee. And I just double check. Uh, but Section 1 does say that it's uh, election two members for a two year term, two members for one year term. And then there are, uh, I believe, a, a point. Or, uh, the adjutant yes. and the PATH um, commander are automatic on, of the yeah, per the bylaws. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, again, with no comment uh, about why it was done the way it was done before, I, I imagine over time things are done with a uh, <laughs> common goal, and the common goal would be let's get this committee formed and done and let's not be setting up meetings and going through all this particularly but again because of the importance of uh and i really appreciate it, i think it was mark who made that comment when this sale process clears membership vote presuming it does we still have to get it by the attorney general's office and we just want to make sure that they we can represent to them that the members voted on this, uh, that the funds are going to be put into trust for the benefit of the perpetuity or continuing uh, of the post. Uh, they may want to know what, what are you guys doing? You're selling the property, right? What's happened? And so we just want to make sure when we put that uh, request in front of the Attorney General's office as a nonprofit body, we get to say we did this as strict to the existing bylaws as we have them, uh, and as we know them to govern the post as we can. Uh, so I appreciate this is a lot of process and procedure and talk, um, but we decided it's a member benefit to get this thing through and approved and not held up at all. Um, and we're asking the members to, at each of these stages to give uh, their approval. Thank you. Yes, Jim. Sorry to bother you again. Uh, you're asking for a motion to have an election on the 28th of October for the search and nominees. No, no, no. no. We're, we're, we have to make it. Yeah. The reason why I ask that is that if we elect to the members shall cast one vote each. If we vote for that tonight, is that going to take effect 
only between now and April? Or is it going to go from April to the following year? All right. All right, Mark Bartle, task commander. I think I've got a, a solution here to get us beyond the search and nominating committee for right now. What we're looking for is anyone else in attendance or potentially uh, who's joining us online as we do have, have a number of people who, who would be willing to who would be willing to be on the search and nominating committee for the balance of this year and those that would be on that two-year term. We, that could be determined afterwards. But the bottom line is we need to get that committee formed tonight. There's a handful of us here who are already on it who have volunteered or would be up for election. But if we want to fill it out and then vote to approve those that are on there, I think that's really where we're looking to get and move beyond tonight. So tonight, search and nominating to get ourselves a candidate or a slate of uh, members who want to participate on the property finance and the holding corporation a month from now. That election. That's what that's what we're looking to uh, take care of here. That's correct. Tonight is just the vote tonight by ballot is just for those people filling out the search and nominating committee. The vote in October then will be to fill the positions on the property and finance committee and on the holding court board. Could, could the other could the other yes. members yes. who are who have volunteered to be up for consideration for the uh, search and nominee could you please stand up who are here could that be until next election in April we we can we can I'm willing to say if everyone's willing to say that then we've got it already settled for next year's slate of officers to select. But there's how many people? Four of us here tonight, right? So we yeah we have Lynn Riaj, Andy Keller, Jim Cooper, Dave, and I'm the task commander. As task commander and myself. And Doug Bigland. No, that's no. That's the whole thing. No, that's something different. So, do we want? Do we want? Do we, I don't think we need any. We have five. We have five. Does anyone in the audience here tonight or online joining us, as Sean could let us know, does anyone wish to put their name into consideration to be on the search and nominating committee? Anyone? 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 anyone, anyone? Star nine to me uh, to raise your hand, please. Anyone wishing to join or be a part of the search and nominating committee? Going once, twice, historically, three times. How many people do you? It's just a matter of getting it done. How many people have been? But people have volunteered to be a part of it now. So if there's anyone else, is a good number. No one? No one online. Okay. Yes, the vote. With that, I would like to make a nominee that we vote by acclamation the names that have been reported. No, you have to uh, vote the motion first. Um, you, that's, that was presented either up or down. This one right here, up or down. Well, then let me get this out here because I think it will solve the whole thing anyway. I know we have to follow the procedure. I understand that. Yeah. I understand that. I'm not just my question. Uh, Jim, that was your question about uh, the vote in October. How long will those terms, as well as the vote for tonight last? If it's a candidate for a one year term, which there are, that term will then be up for re election next April. If it's a two year term, the April following that. Does that address your question? Yes, it did. So, you. Good question, thanks. Uh, I just want to clarify, make sure that the motion that's on the floor, which uh, you have read, 
is this thing on this piece of paper, A, B, C, D, and E, all of those are part of one motion. Okay, just so make sure you know that. And that's part of whatever discussion that you have here. And there's you know, when it comes time to vote for the people on the search and nominating, you know, elect four, two for one year terms from now to April, two for two year terms from now to April 2022. But we have a motion on the floor, it has to go up or down. Would, would you recommend that we read the uh, Do you want to reread? Uh, everybody has this motion. Yes. Um, it's on the floor. We need a first, a second, or whatever you want to do. We've got those. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, Don and Mark. So it's time to, oh, sorry, so, it's time to call the motion. All right. So we we'll like to call the motion. To, for the to elect our a search and nominating committee. All those in favor of the search and nominating committee, raise your hand. All those opposed, the ayes have it. Now that that's behind us, we can simply just use the your acclamation of the current five volunteers. Excuse me. Vote like one second. Or you, Mark. Would you, Glenn, should we go through the other four? E, C, D, D, D. Just if you already with that. Okay, got it. Got it. Okay, okay forgive me. So then I would like to make a motion that by acclamation we approve the four members who have volunteered to be a part of the search and nominating led by the past past man. The acclamation means unanimous. How would you differentiate between the two year term and the one year term then? Let's see who I mean oh, somebody get a green piece of paper. Yeah. We have a agreement <laughs> on that. That's true. That's true. I mean it's just a matter of I think that was going to be part of what the membership was going to vote at the end of the okay. year. Okay. That's pointed out. This is what people volunteered for. Don't care. Okay. Yeah, exactly. No, we don't want to come to no, the no, 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 no. Uh, it says here on this Can you take the mic? Jim, one year. Mike. Mike. You gotta do the mic. Sorry. You're saying that Lynn Lodge is a one-year term, Mike is a one-year term. James is two year and Andy is two year. Does that mean I can't vote for the body for a two year term? Uh, I'm just telling you what they volunteered for. Well, there you go. Why do we even have to vote? It, it's, it's what, yeah, it's, it's what Diane just said. It's, it's what, their request. Yes, it's their request. Okay. Thank you so much. Would you mind letting me? Sure. Yeah, let's see. I wouldn't that affirmation. Thank you. 
I withdraw that motion by application to approve the Material. They paid last year. They have their 25. 
Uh, these are for 21. Yes. Sure. Make sure that they're uh, making Terry? the right list. We have Dennis Klauski in council um, paint. Uh, as I recall, when we were at a board meeting last week, the discussion led to that we were going to uh, put take the position of any member through December 31st, 2020, correct? Yes. Well, you have to go to last year's membership limit. That's right. We said anyone from the 2019-2020 dues paying or poop poop lives. Well, they pay by a calendar year. That's that's what's getting me confusing. Right. But anyone that had paid for 2019-2020 or anyone that has paid so far for 20 yeah. 2021, all those two you classes. You can't stop people at the you know the, the way this is written. Membership as of September 22nd, 20, if you as if you're going from the 21 to zero. That's the way I'm reading it. Maybe I'm reading it wrong, but I don't have that. The acceptance was we we're going to take the if you had a membership card with the year 2020 on it, and or for the new ones, the 2021 year, I didn't agree with that, but the 2020 and 2021, as long as your membership card is stamped with either one of those two dates, those people would be allowed to vote. That's correct. Yes. And for more clarification, also, if it was a 2021, they should have a second year on it, which would mean they right. were a 2020 member, that they didn't just join yesterday and are voting on stuff that technically they're not a member until January 1st. So we're trying to cover it where everybody is yeah. eligible that should be eligible. This is an active current member in good standing today. I'll note it in the record. Is there anyone left that has not turned in a ballot from that? As a green piece of paper, did not put one out until the day. All right, thank you. So, with no further discussion and knowing that the, okay, I'm sorry, go ahead. Michael, you come up. On the membership issue, my name is Michael Burlett. On the membership issue, I just thinking about this COVID 19 and how everything is being forgiven for a couple of months. For, so, if there's people out there that are members that financially are not able to renew by the expiration date and the voting date, I think we should have some sort of like okay. Social Security or anybody else, they keep giving a forgiveness. Uh, you know, my if my tags are expired, they give me a couple of months forgiveness period to catch up. And I'm just wondering if, uh, you know, if that shouldn't be for the members too, because we do have members that can't afford to keep their membership up to date at this time, that might fall off the roll by the time it's time to vote. So, I leave that for discussion. Thank you for that. Mike, yes. I'll raise my voice for you instead of coming up. We've done that in the past and people have requested it. We've done that if you can't afford the dues, present it forward. We've taken it under advisement with the executive yeah. board. Okay. Jim Watson just mentioned that in the past, the post has allowed members who were in a financial position that would not allow them to pay their current membership to give them a period of leniency if they in writing requested it of the executive board. So if there are any members of the post that fall into that position currently today, 
I feel that uh, I can speak for the executive board that we'd be more than willing to work with the post membership to ensure we continue to have them on as long standing continued members. Mike, just a question, point of order, I'm trying to understand. Yes. Is if people paid their dues last July, they are still eligible to vote. So they've had in the period of July, last July to current. So that's been what, 18 or 15 months, 12, 14, 15 months. So it's you know, it's anybody who paid last year is that will be eligible to vote. If you've got a 2021 card. If you have a 2020 card, you're eligible to vote. That's on Friday, December 31st. Yeah, right. this vote is going to be in October. So if they paid in July last year, they're eligible to vote in this election on the, at the end of October. Sean, you have something? If the board would just recognize me just for a second. Yes. Just for the record, um, the then myself was about the Zool's and the Nature. My name is Sean Davis. I'm a past squadron commander, district commander, state commander, uh, convention chairperson at the national level. I've also been the membership chair of the state of Minnesota. Your membership card entitles you to membership from January 1st through December 31st for national guidelines and administrative bank. The membership renewal starts in July and the target is to have 100% renewal by January 1st. So just to clarify, administratively, if you have a 2021 card and not a 2020, you're not a member until 2021. If you have a 2020 card, you're current as of today through December 31st. Per national, there's a grace period of 30 days after January 1st to renew. But after that, you are considered no longer a member if you have not renewed. And theoretically, you have to reapply. That's per national. And for the time, I just want to clarify that because I want to make sure it's clear that as a membership year is calendar, your membership renewal is what's the term? Fiscal. 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 Who, who first and second on the uh, September 22nd minutes, please? Uh, the, the first on the September 22nd, I believe, was Andy, and the uh, second, I believe, was uh, Richard. Oh, that's right. Yes, Richard. Richard made the second. So, is there any further discussion on the minutes? Yes, sir. Uh, if I'm reading this right, uh, somebody proposed the changes, but they were not made. They says it says here, Hewitt made uh, it make a motion to reestablish the security. Hewitt make a motion to Hewitt make a motion. Those all should be made, not made. Otherwise, you might just make those motions or what? Okay. Page two items uh, B, C, and D. Then on the next page, uh, Mike uh, Bartle, it says to make the motion. It does not say name. I think somebody better get some grammar questions. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Thank you for the discussion. Um, it's, I feel it's obvious it's a typographical error. Um, Spell checks on the thing, but make this a word too. So, uh, any other discussion? Okay. Yes. For the record, for the record, we have 1,054 members paid as of for the year 2020, Legion year. So, we have over 1,000 members who, conceivably, if the information is correct, will be receiving a ballot. Have stuck with this motion to, to uh, correct the grammar. Have second, and then I can take I can correct it. Can you make a motion to correct the grammar to the minutes of the September 22nd meeting, please? I still will I'll make that motion. Second. Seconded by Dave. Mark. Mark. Sorry. And the motion passed. 
All right, can we vote to make no, that radical correction? All right, outstanding. Those opposed? All right, motion passes. Okay, yes, now with any other further discussion, can we have a vote on passing of the minutes from the September 22nd meeting? Those in favor? Those opposed? The motion passes. All right. Can I have a motion to approve the minutes from the post 435 e board of 18 August 2020? Uh, those materials were also included in the chip mail release. Dave Kane seconded. Andy, again. Any discussion on the August 18th meetings? All those in favor of approving the 18th of August meetings, raise your hand. All those opposed, the motion passes. Yes, announce the uh, election results. All right, so the election results from the search nominating committee uh, here this evening, there were 29 votes for uh, Lynn Liage, 28 for myself, 29 for James Cooper, 28 for Andy Keller, uh, write-ins for Tom Eckhoff and Jim Munson. And again, if anybody is willing to meet or be on either the holding corporation or the property and finance committee meeting, those members that were just approved by you, the membership, to be the search nominating committee, we will be hanging out here shortly once we adjourn this evening to talk to anybody that's interested. Anybody that wants to help out in any way, we want you. I want you. Less things for you to do. All right. Uh, before we go on open mic tonight, I'd like to, first off, I, I'd like to see if we can put that towards, anything that's relevant, obviously, but if we could try to focus it on to get a feel of where the membership, the people that are here that made the time to come out this evening, or were able to, I don't want to make that sound disparaging, like people that aren't here, you know, didn't make the time, everybody has a busy life, but I really, for one, would like to hear what everybody's thoughts on moving forward and you know, what the, the future looks like for us. If we move forward with this, and if the, you know, uh, the, the property and finance and holding corporation and moving forward with the, the, the legal uh, team and the post gets sold, I won't really want to know what people that are in here think about this. So if we could keep it towards that, that would be great. I think it would be helpful for everybody that's on this uh, at this point in time. So uh, without me talking anymore, uh, I'd like to turn the mic over to anybody here who would like to be recognized this evening. Step up to the stage game and open discussion also. Please, please keep it friendly, clean, you know, uh, we know what to talk about. Good evening, my name is Sean Reagan. I've been a member of the post for uh, about four or four and a half years. This is a Marine Corps in the Army, so thank you to everyone else here for your service. So I guess here's my view. Um, something needs to be done, and I think we need to try and be positive. There's so many negative things in our world today. How can we move this post forward being positive? I don't know that it's feasible to maintain the post as is with the building. Is there another way that we can be vibrant in this community? Is it selling the building in the land? Maybe some agreement with what's being built to have some facility to help veterans. Maybe we have job fairs, when we have counseling, some kind of positive outreach to the community. 
realistically, I don't really see a way where we can have this type of facility, have a bar, have a restaurant, dancing, all these things. It just doesn't seem realistic. For me, I would love to see a positive impact on the community, helping veterans, helping the community. Having a spot would be great. Um, not, not sure what's possible, so that's my comment. And I guess my hope is that we can all remain positive. It seems like there's a lot of charged emotions, a lot of people are upset about what's being done. Let's try and be a positive voice here. There's so many negative things in our world. Let's try and do good, some good together. So thank you. If you're online, please hit star nine to raise your hand if you wish to speak. Thank you. Uh, if there's anybody else who would like to speak, you could come up and just wait to hand the mic over. Thank you, Mike. I agree with you 100% about trying to be positive. I think one of the things that is very important in this, right? I think we should try to create a Ridgefield Veterans Club, just like they did here. They had a struggling legion. They had a, a maintaining VFW. We have a struggling legion. We have a VFW that is, we don't know where it's going right now. But I guess the point I'm trying to make is that if we made it a Veterans Club, and the legion would pay rent for it, Veterans Bar, I guess, or whatever you want to call it, and maybe a little room for a small restaurant, not a huge one like we have right now. Knock the place down, have a developer come in, they can own the land. We stay here at Post 435. We've got a Veterans Lake, we've got a Veterans Memorial, we've got a legion that's been around for 70 years, okay? I think what's important about that whole thing is that, yes, we've had some mismanagement. We've had some thefts. The thefts that we had probably cost us close to a million dollars by the time we get done by not paying taxes, not paying all the utilities that share the family would allow. More importantly, though, is that we have to have a place that we call home. Now, there's 25 leisure posts in the city of Minneapolis and Richfield. There's only four that have homes. This mean we have to have a home. But the membership that has, the posts that have the largest members also have a home. I think that's very important. We could lease out a bar, we could lease out a restaurant, we could lease out whatever. And I don't think we should take on the homeless on this type of thing that we're thinking about, but we should take a look at maybe veterans that need some assistance, that the county could help us with, that MACB could help us with. But I think more than anything, we should maintain a presence in Richfield, Minnesota. We have a tradition, we have the future, we've got to keep it going. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Chuck Munson. Originally, I had no relation, thank God. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Originally, I joined uh, Richard Leaky Voice Post in 1969. Because of financial problems, I dropped out. And only five years ago, I was financially able to come back in. But this post, has been here a lot of years. We have a auditorium on the building that is fairly new. The main part of the building, the, the public part, needs to come down. We can take the public part down, rebuild a small part to add to it, to make offices or whatever, and use the auditorium as our meeting post. We maintain our area where we're at. Nobody has looked into any alternatives other than selling. It's sell, sell, sell. There are many alternatives that could, could be taken and done. Another one that could possibly work. Comments being made that the city of Richmond wants to buy the building and the land and put a high rise in there. 
Rich Hill's got too many high rises going up. But we can maybe sell it to the city of Rich Hill with the agreement that they put in a legion post and bar and restaurant that could, would be run by the American Post 435. Of course, if the public park would be open to any resident of the building, but we would still be in the same location. This location, the American Legion Park was built by Richard Legion Post. The Veterans Memorial was not, it's not part of Richard Post, but it is a main part of the uh, Richard Legion Post area. We need to maintain our presence and our footprint within the city of Richmond and preferably in this present location. Thank you. Reminder again, if you're online on the phone, star nine to raise your hand or use the Zoom app to raise your hand if you wish to speak. Thank you. Make sure you all understand the conversation that's already gone on right now. A couple months ago, the executive committee met with the city of Richfield about a month, month and a half after that. Cushman and Wakefield, the people were talking about help us sell the property, also met with the city of Richfield. The city of Richfield has an agenda of what they'd like to see. They've ultimately decided that they'd like to see some higher density housing in there. But in, in accordance with that, they also would like to have a large meeting space that the city can use and the post could use. They would also like to see a bar or restaurant facility in there, and they'd like to have that run and operated by the Legion Post. So the city is at the same point that we're all are. Right? What it looks like is some of the nuances of what that would look like. But if we could get a smaller facility that, you know, bar or restaurant type thing that the Legion could manage, even if, you know, get the large meeting space was managed by the Legion, if not, it was managed by the city. I think we can get most of the things we want to do. One of the other discussions we had with the city was being able to have an emphasis on low cost veteran housing as part of this housing development thing. That's also on board. The city is also on board with that. So I think direction, we can look at the way the executive board is discussion, the things we're trying to accomplish is can we sell a property, but still maintain our presence there? still be able to help the veterans and the things. So I think directionally, we're, we're all moving in the same way and we're all looking to try to accomplish the same things. Thank you, Dave. Thank you. I'm Tom Eckhoff, I'm the new life member, man. How about that? <laughs> Okay, I really echo all, everything everyone said, and I personally think that the American Legion needs to stay in its present location and presence. So that should be more of the objective. I don't like to hear the word sell, sell, sell. Maybe we don't have to sell. Maybe we own the footprint we have had for 60 years at the one location within the city of Richfield, within our, I live in Richfield, with our community. We, we need to be back to giving money to charities, helping the community, helping veterans. Well, we haven't been able to do any of that. We haven't had money, number one. Our, our black restaurant wasn't able to pull it off. We haven't paid our taxes. We've had a lot of issues. But what about the, the VFW in Richfield? They're not in a good place. What about the officers club that used to be in existence out there across from the airport. They still exist. They have money. They have money. They have funds. They would like to exist in the world. Why don't we, as the American Legion Post Commander, 435, or officers, or everyone here, why don't we negotiate and start searching for things like that? Alternate, unthought of, undiscussed. Maybe it has been discussed. I've been out of commission for it couple of months here. I've been gone this whole year. But maybe we should get working on that or toward those goals. That's what I would like to see. Never give up. I mean, sell, 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 we lose any control. I don't care if they say, yeah, you, can, you, you guys live in the basement, you know, like in mom's basement. 
let's let's try hard more effort than we've expended already and i'm sure you guys have been talking a lot i'm sure you have but but i don't know so but i want i, I just want to hope everybody let's move forward let's let's get back to helping each other our fellow citizens our members our veterans everybody we need each other all of us like this in this political negative climate we're in why don't we just love each other and help each other a little bit instead of just fight about everything so i've, I've, I've gone off my track but let's let's look a little more forward a little forward thinking the veterans park next door the veterans monument 60 years of that big flagpole flying out there in front of the american legion we should be doing that all of us and, I, and when i'm healthy i would like to be able to contribute and i think i'd like to see everybody else step up and contribute as well a lot of people are but i mean we just have to we got to do more don't give up Again, just a reminder for those of you on the phone, you can hit star nine to raise your hand. For those of you in the Zoom app, if you hover by your name, there should be ability to raise your hand to speak. Thank you. Hello, my name is Adam Rose. I'm here for the Well, I have only one question. Tom mentioned the officers club. That was offered to us. The officers club did offer to merge with us and pay for some of the repairs. And there was a couple other offers too. As agitating on the executive board, I heard nothing of this. I literally didn't hear about it until last night from Teresa. So I have only one question. Why are we hearing about these offers? Have you heard about it? They said that they brought it up. Is this last year, Tom? Tom, that they brought this up or when? In the past, I knew. Recently. Recent times, I had a private, I had a one-on-one -on -one conversation with someone from the board, okay. but I've been out of commission. Yeah. So I haven't. I have not opened up any legion business in these last. No, uh, wait. Years. I was talking to Teresa last night in, um, from Fifth District, and she said that that offer was just recent, within a few months. Yeah. I didn't hear. Sir, anyone else? Um, would you make an exception for the desk to speak at this time? Is there any membership that would be opposed? Uh, Legion family member. Legion family member. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you. Um, my, for those of you who don't know me, uh, my name is Jill Davis, and I am the auxiliary, your auxiliary president of Unit 435. Um, I just wanted to, uh, number one, there's something in our preamble that we say every day, every meeting we have, and it says, to participate in and contribute to the accomplishment of the aims and purposes of the American Legion. Now, the reason I say that is, your auxiliary is here. We are here to support you through this tough time. Um, we, when this, when the building shut down, we took a big hit. We lost our island breakfast fundraiser. Uh, we, in four months, October through January, for COVID hit, we raised over four thousand dollars profit from that island breakfast. So you guys are hurting, and we're hurting from the loss of the building. COVID probably would keep us out of commission this year anyway. But I just wanted to, on behalf of the auxiliary. Uh, 250 members plus for uh, 2020 membership year to say that we're here to support you and I think I can uh, I think I can uh, uh, also on behalf of the Sons of the American Legion, my husband Sean Davis and the American Legion writers. We are a family. The American Legion family does best when it works together as a family. So please, as you guys are making these decisions, I know that we can't have a vote. vote. But let us in so that we can be aware of what's going on, support you so that as we become, figure out what we're going to become, we can do it together as a family. Because the family succeeds. I could go on and on how the any examples, but I just want to say again, we're here to support you. We want us to come out of this on the other side so that we can all be successful to support the mission of the American Legion. 
Is there anyone online that wants to speak? We can turn this off. Will that help with that? I'm just waiting to see if anyone. Hearing none, I'll turn the microphone over to the vice commander. All right. Then I will leave my couple of real quick comments here. I agree with just about everything I've heard here. Uh, we've got to find a way to save the post, first and foremost, to be able to continue to move on and do charitable good work for the community, the veterans of the community. And trust me, in my heart, it needs to stay somehow on that property. It would it would kill me to think that, and I don't know the, the, the history far enough back, but I've always thought to myself, I will bet this post probably donated that land that that park is on or something at some point in time. I don't know that to be true or not, but it's just kind of miraculous that that beautiful Veterans Park is co-located with, you know, with our building here. Uh, it takes me back to, you know, uh, I'm 54 years old, uh, my mom is 38 years old, and you know, when she and I talk about this, you know, this post, she always brings me back to, you know, back in the days when there were parades in downtown and candy and you know, those types of things. And she was always the line of people who were marching for that post, you know, the largest post you know, in the nation. You know. And she knows that she still talks about that in her 80s today. So I truly want to see this move forward somehow. 
and us stay on that location. That's what I'm driven to do. I will see that through in one form or fashion or another. That's my my pledge to the, the post. So uh, we just got to be in agreement on how we get there and look at what are the possible viable solutions. Put that before the, the membership and then let the membership decide whether it's a high rise, it's a co located thing, it's a veterans thing. I honestly, I don't care about all that. All I care is that there is yeah, a post, a meeting area, a small bar, and it could be a flat top just flipping burgers and dropping fries into a, a basket for all I care as far as the food side goes. Uh, but that's just my opinion. With that said, if there's no other discussion this evening, uh, I would like to. Oh, yes, Al. A new business item or an old business item? Man, are you going to go on or are you just going to close it up? We have to go out of open mic. Oh, yeah. I have a, I have a bill for $405 for the American flag that now flies on our flagpole. It was put there in June or July and we haven't paid for it. I got 50 bucks in my hat right now. I'd be happy to go around the room and collect whatever we can and we can put toward that bill because it's a nice company that did it for us. Is that Tom, appropriate? Tom, I, I haven't received that bill. What's that? I haven't received that bill. I can send it to you. Yeah. Yeah, if you can. I'd be happy to collect money right now. Yeah, no, do it. That's right. Collect the money. We'll get it. Yeah. It's an invoice dated uh, July, June. It was in June they put the flag up. We just haven't been able to get to it. You know, we're better mix up. But I got 50 bucks in my hat. I'll walk around. Here's the, here's the bill so you can see it. I want you to see it. Okay. Now you get 90 bucks. Thank you. The bill is for four hundred and five dollars. It's for the American flag. Thank you very much. We have it right in this room. I've never been a fundraiser on the hat. This is for us. Americanism. Thank you. 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 Thank Lifetime membership award here this evening. And I would like to also remind everyone if you are hungry, it would probably be helpful to this organization. Uh, if someone you know, went out and patronized their establishment a little bit before you had them all. With that said, can I have a motion to adjourn the meeting this evening? And the motion was made by Chuck Munson and seconded by Rich Field. Seal. Thank you. Yeah. So the uh, the search nominating committee, uh, we're going to hang out up here for a little bit. If anybody would like to come chat with us, to volunteer to uh, be part of uh, the holding corporation or the finance uh, uh, property finance committee moving forward, come up and see us talk to us here. We'll hang out for a little bit. Thank you. Have a good evening, everyone. Drive safe. Thank you.